Hello viewers and welcome to Panzer Tactics HD. I'm your host Pipi Chu Chu and today we will be doing a let's try or rather a first impressions video on this particular title. So Panzer Tactics HD here is this turn-based strategy game and the best way that I would describe it is that it is a Panzer General-esque game. It'll be on Steam on the 22nd of May and it will retail for 30 US dollars. Uh, so let's begin from First off, by checking out sort of what content you're getting here, because I mean it is an HD remake after all, and for its price point, I feel like we really have to check out how much content you're getting here. So first thing, as you may have noticed, is that there's no multiplayer tab, so that is uh, one thing. I don't believe there's a multiplayer module, but the game does have a fair selection of scenarios, starting off with like quite a few of these uh, well-built sort of training scenarios to teach you how to play the game and some. I would say exemplary scenarios for say setting up ambushes, capturing and sieging cities and whatnot like that. And then following that, the game comes with a few independent scenarios where you can just sort of uh, try your try your best at taking down, say, some of these historical battles, such as like Warsaw, Poland, Moscow, and Salerno over here. And I think the, like with these Panzer General, Panzer uh, yeah, Panzer General esque games, I mean the main replayability comes from the fact that it's sort of it's sort of this score attack type of thing where your primary goal is to really just sort of complete these things in the minimum amount of time using the minimum amount of resources to really just sort of blitz these locations. But I think the main amount of content mainly comes from the campaign portion of the game, and the game comes with three campaigns, and these are right around 10 to you know, 8 missions long each. So you have one for the Axis, one for the Soviets, and one for the Allies, and how they do the difficulty setting inside this game is kind of odd in that the Axis campaign is the easy campaign, the, the Soviets campaign here, it, it says that you know it's, it's recommended for experienced people people for the game and the allied one is evidently the greatest challenge um, inside the game so it, it, it's sort of odd like that but again I mean the main source of dif difficulty for these games are that uh, is is that sort of uh, point attack score attack type of thing where you're really just going for the uh, the rating there so let's take a look at the campaigns and their particularities. So I mean inside the battles you, you get a set amount of troops and you're really just supposed to just do the objectives for them. Well inside the campaign, uh, throughout the battles you gain effectively fame, which is the currency inside the game, and your troops, your core units, will level up and they'll carry from battle to battle. So as they sort of do that they gain more stats and some special abilities and stuff and such like that, although that carries the, uh, the penalty of, say, if you lose them they do get destroyed and while you can buy units they will of course be at a lower experience level than say units that you've kept through your campaign so yeah this is the campaign set a uh, screen for the axis campaign as you see here there's about say 10 missions and one bonus mission we'll just start off with Poland and we will just move forward as such now I'm pretty sure everybody is familiar with the Blitz in Poland. All we have to do is capture Warsaw here. The other Polish towns marked by the little Polish flags are the secondary objectives and we have a maximum of 30 days to do this. Alright, so we can begin like this. And the first thing that we have to do is just really just check out our troops. Um, inside this scenario, start off, or rather inside this campaign, you start off with a fair number of these Panzer 3s and Panzer 2s, some infantry, some artillery, and some armored recon, and some planes. The game has a fairly fully realized, say, set of units, and we can also do a bit of recruiting here. Uh, speaking of which, I am going to buy some uh, pioneers, and I'm going to place those down in just a second, because those are something that we need a little bit of. I think we'll also need one unit of uh, Wehrmacht infantry, so I'll buy that, and we'll just sort of throw down these guys right here. And perhaps, perhaps we can buy some artillery as well. No, we can't afford it now. So yeah, fame is down here. Currently we have 200 of it, and that is, again, the primary resource that you gain throughout these campaigns, uh, mostly by accomplishing your objectives very fastly, and of course getting those secondary objectives. Now, another thing that you can get inside this game is that um, it, it sort of adds another level of depth to it in which you can sort of unlock or rather buy these, say, officers at a very high cost inside fame. 
And once you sort of get these guys, you can then attach them to your uh, units on the map, which gives uh, them slightly more combat potential depending on which one that you buy. So I think it's uh, time to start the game here and we'll begin. So mission one, Siege of Warsaw, turn one, or rather, you know, day one. And for the maximum amount of, like, say, stars that we can get, which is the rating system inside this game, we'll have to finish this mission in 11 days, and that is the one that I will be going for. So my general plan for this scenario is rather simple. You take the armored units and you really just move them down this main road, and you try your luck at smashing uh, the enemy lines over there. So we'll, we'll essentially be doing that, and of course we have some planes here to assist us in our goal. And in the meantime, we'll get some of our infantrymen here to just sort of work their way around the side and uh, go for those side objectives here and there. And I'll get our guys with artillery to move in support. And the game has a fair amount of depth for what you uh, might imagine for these sort of introductory level war games where, say right now, um, move our guys just forwards, and I'll talk a little bit more about the, the, the troops here. But for 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 your infantry and your men, it they simulate ammunition and fuel, and of course they have uh, each and every single unit has their own movement ratings, their their say their type of visual spotting, their type of range, and down here they have their their attack powers in four different types under defense in armor and airplanes down here inside the red attack powers inside the blue, and there's a there's another in depth panel here for sort of uh, extra details here and such. So I think we'll start off our campaign by really just bombing this one group of Polish infantry and we'll just sort of keep uh, all of the other units in reserve near the, the back for now and we'll just end a turn now. Now, the one thing about this game that sort of stands out to me as, as, as a bit of a sort of... I, I wouldn't say necessarily bad, but a misdesigned feature is that like, you'll see here that the animations do take, say, they, they take a rather long time to actually finish. And right now, I actually have the game on fast move. And, well, yeah, well, it does speed up the movement by quite a bit. It doesn't do anything for the combat animations, and these combat animations are fairly lengthy. So let's begin by avenging the death of our ground attack unit by finishing off the Polish air units here with our uh, Messerschmitts. And really, we'll just get the tank corps to move forwards. Now, what we want to do here is that we want to avoid Polish ambushes by, of course, using our recon vehicles over here. And I want to get my artillery moving forwards, and of course the infantry and stuff to follow up. And as you've uh, probably already seen me do before here, I can get my guys to mount up on trucks, or alternatively, you can actually mount them on planes and uh, landing craft for amphibious invasions and things like that. So we'll start off here by taking these two side villages, and I think next turn we will be able to really press forward and get into... Uh, the other side of this big river. So I mean the game f still flows fairly fast but uh, with the whole slow combat animations thing it does sort of stall things up a bit. Right so we'll do some damage here and there. And let's see now. Yeah, unfortunately, there's just no way to fast forward through these animations. I mean, after a while, uh, you, you do get sick and sort of tired of those, and it would be yeah, just really rather nice if they, say, added some way to check up on those. And the AI here is making some really rather odd moves. It's going outside, it's going outside of the city tile, and it has decided to just sort of skirmish off with my artillery unit. So I'll just move that back so then they can shoot again, and I'll get my infantry to occupy the town and destroy that unit. And as you saw there, we gain a little bit of uh, fame for capturing these towns. So these places are, uh, these, these little, say, tiles on the map are actually fairly uh, decently fully fledged as, as a sort of a, a thing to add, as an element rather, to sort of add a little bit more depth to the game. So um, if, we're, like, if I were to compare it to say the, uh, the Panzer core line of games, I'd say that they do the terrain a little bit better. And uh, it is, I mean, 
still again very user friendly it tells you exactly what the pros and cons of say each and every single one of these tank or tiles are so for example uh, these forests provide decent cover they provide two cover indicated by the shields here they lower your visual by one unfortunately and they cost two two three two movement points for that's for infantry tanks motorized units and half tracks respectively the other thing is that they while well, these uh, places provide say cover and some things and such like that they also provide attack and uh, defensive bonuses and that's really just sort of indicated by this little uh, blue up arrow or alternatively a red negative arrow for your units so i have some pioneers here let's check these guys stats out so currently they are inside a city tile they have zero experience indicated by these iron crosses um, rather they're at the first level ex of experience they have two defense right now they have a visual range of 2, they have an attack range of 1, movement of 4, they currently have 52 units of fuel, and since we've already attacked with them once, they only have 5 out of 6 rounds of ammunition. And these guys do, say, 4 bars of damage to infantry, and a whole lot more to tanks. Well, uh, these pioneers are decent, uh, mainly due to the fact that they can really uh, brawl it out with infantry inside, say, villages like such, uh, fairly effectively. So we'll get them to slowly whittle down this unit of Polish infantry as our main offensive here goals for Warsaw. And the one thing that I've noticed is that inside this game, artillery appears to be king, where it can just really devastate pretty much everything um, out inside the open, that is. Well, the enemy has artillery over here. And unfortunately, my tank unit is going to take quite a beating from those now, oddly enough, inside this game, the uh, the rivers are inside the middle of tiles, where in, well, most war games that I know of, rivers usually run on the side of tiles. It's not, say, a terribly big thing, but it, it's, it's something to definitely, like, sort of keep in mind, because it does, uh, it does matter sort of how they uh, do the penalties, or rather the um the bonuses of the terrain there here and there so i think our attack is going pretty well over here it'll be a few more turns before we can say do anything and oh no it looks like they're trying to keep that uh, bridge hit from expanding and they're trying to block me off right there And let's see what has happened. So we've identified a few more units are here and there. And it looks like the Polish are moving up artillery to try to stop us. Huh. Oh, well, we'll get my artillery to counter battery uh, fire. And again, artillery just wrecks things out inside the open terrain. And we'll try to nab that unit for some nice uh, experience points later on for our infantry unit over here. Now, hmm, Polish infantry here are pretty decently dug in. So I think I'll pull back my units just for now and they're doing quite a number on my artillery as well but nonetheless we'll just try to press forward here i'll get my units to just sort of sh shimmy over here and there and we'll see what we can do to really muck up these guys so there we go and perfect so now we've opened up this area so then we can squeeze our recon armored uh, car unit in here. We can get him to fire at the infantry inside the town here. And speaking of which, I believe we should, yeah, we should be able to get this uh, infantry convoy if we put them on trucks and move them in here. But that is going to make them fairly vulnerable to that artillery unit. Is this a... I think this is an artillery unit, at least. It might be an artillery unit. It's, uh, it's sort of hard to tell, actually, what the game's is graphics. So, um, as like as you see here, there is also weather inside the game, and the weather again adds another sort of element to the game that influences your your sort of tactics. Here, um, inside the rain, what happens is that the airplanes will not be able to actually attack anything, just sort of to simulate the low visibility inside these conditions. And as you can see here, I am unable to attack enemy units uh, on the ground with my airplanes, and actually in the air, if there were any still sort of around us. I would have shown you guys that, but yeah, it's uh, sort of like that. Now, hmm, let's see, so they still have two units here. I think I'll try to 
go around the side here, finish off the infantry unit, and then we can work our way on the uh, artillery unit here in just a bit. And we'll go around here like such. No? Now, one thing that's sort of odd about the game is that, because, I mean, it is a remake of a DS title, uh, it does have this sort of, like, movement confirmation thing. However, with that said, it, it's sort of problematic in that after a while, you just want to sort of move your units, f like, fast and without sort of, say, confirming every every single little thing. And it... So it, it causes this problem where sometimes if if you, if you do your movement say a little too fast for 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 the game sometimes say moving those it 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 causes this problem where your units sort of just bounce back and forth because the game just sort of you, you don't say confirm what you do there and what do we have here we have some three tonner trucks it's probably oh it's an AT unit it's kind of neat. I think we'll just set up like such. Right, so end this turn, and let's see how many more we have to go. So I think this will actually be the uh, the end of that the resistance inside Warsaw. So we still have six turns for the three stars rating. And, of course, what we can do here is that we can use some of those turns to, say, capture more of these secondary objectives for, say, points. But, uh, actually, inside this game, all you really have to do is just capture the, the primary objectives for the match to end. And I, I believe, actually, the, the side objectives, they, they only give you, ex like, fame and, of course, the experience from taking those units. Whereas, say, if I capture the main objective right now, it'll actually just finish the mission and give you the three stars, sort of, anyway. So, yeah, congratulations, you have captured Warsaw. We're giving you uh, 3,500 fame points, so we can buy a lot more units now. And, of course, we get that three-star rating, but we don't finish all of those secondary objectives. So yeah, that is sort of Panzer Tactics HD at a glance. See you guys next time. Be sure to like and subscribe as always. See you then.